So we're, uh, the PowerPoint isn't up and running yet, but we're going to start anyway. There's probably a few people that are going to be coming in um, a bit late. So I'll talk a bit about what we're going to see on the PowerPoint. We're going to take things chapter by chapter, and certainly don't hesitate in asking any questions. Uh, as we need an interactive uh, environment, Christine might also say a few words. The objective of this conference today is to focus on one of the basic human rights, which is the right to be different. Christine Waro, um, who is present here today, works with us in coaching in a professional network that we uh, usually work with. And both of us respond to the requests of our clients with regards to our different competencies. And I'll give you our website, um, as it'll be on the PowerPoint, but as it's not working yet. Our website is www.enixeprofileconseil.fr. I'll read that again. E N I X E P R O F I L E C O N S E I L dot F R. So, just to introduce myself, I work with gifted children or children with learning difficulties. Uh, and I also work with, with businesses, uh, with professionals who are looking to go in a different direction or looking to change direction. I work with continuous professional development and with the French fund that funds professional development. I identify specific profiles that could be interesting for different companies. And Christine Waro, who has been working for 15 years with the council, she has also managed big international projects for different structures. She is an expert in analyzing in analyzing different profiles on a global level. And tomorrow she will be talking to us and sharing her experiencing experiences on coaching. Just as a reminder that for 15 years, uh, 50 years, there have been two big associations that have been fighting for the law to recognize this right to be different. Those two associations are, of course, Mensa and Eurotalent. Eurotalent was the first association to make a recommendation to the European Council and these laws have been picked up in, in France. Um, you have perhaps, and they have also been taken in the Delobier report. I'm not sure if anybody here has heard of the Delobier report. We would, I will also talk a lot about the Delobier report on, when I do my presentation shortly. Uh, there are still a lot of steps to be taken in order to, for this law to be um, applied to gifted children and we will look at what has been done in France and in other countries. Um, and not only for, for gifted children. And, all, and also children with other learning difficulties. Et leur application pour les enfants précoces et un accompagnement spécifique à la précocité, le pas n'est pas encore fait. Voilà, donc nous parlerons aussi, hein, on va avoir un, un échange autour de comment est-ce que ça se passe en France et comment ça se passe ailleurs, euh, quelles seraient les clés euh, d'orientation pour que les accompagnements de toutes les différences à l'école, et pas seulement des enfants en difficulté, puissent rentrer dans les principes d'accompagnement de notre pédagogie en France. Alors, nous avons des traducteurs. Euh, Est-ce qu'il y a besoin euh, d'une traduction Est-ce que vous suivez à peu près euh, tous en français le, la conférence C'est bon pour tout le monde, ça va bon, Merci, Colette. The proposals following the recommendations from Eurotalent and the Delobier report. Alors, euh, um, the, the recommendations were not simply that we must uh, support gifted children, but that we must support 
psychodiversity in, in schools and that it is important to recognize that all children are different and it should, we should adapt to their differences. Uh, up until now, the French school system has been centered on children who, have, who find school difficult, who have problems at school. They think it is considered that gifted children should succeed at school because they, have, they find it easier to learn. But Mensa and Eurotalent have shown that intellectually precocious children also find, have difficulties at school. They, they can have difficulties in integrating, they can have behavioral problems, they can be excluded and disinterested at school. Um, they can, um, they can the, the school is often inadapted to their needs, they can um, suffer and they have inadequate uh, collaborations and relationships that are not uh, as fulfilling as they could be and this is a this is a real waste and a waste that is visible to all the French school system doesn't know how to move forward and how to support such students through their schooling uh, the suggestions from the from the from the uh, report is that we recognize intellectually precocious children and that we prevent the difficulties that they may encounter. It is suggested that measures to support children who have a high risk of becoming disinterested at school be implemented and that the, the pace, the schooling pace be adapted to all children, not just gifted children and that this idea of psychodiversity be integrated into the schooling system. The last suggestion from the Delobier report in 2002 was to develop a global strategy that adapts schooling to all children, whether they be intellectually precocious or not, and treats each case as different. And we have started to think about how we can change teaching. It is thought that intellectually precocious children must find school easy. However, they do not integrate. Why is this the case? It is not just um, a problem of a technical teaching problem. And we have started to completely rethink the way that we teach. Généralement, un enfant précoce a des facilités pour intégrer l'acte d'apprentissage. Or, il ne les intègre pas si facilement que ça. Pour quelles raisons Donc, ce n'est pas uniquement une question de technicité pédagogique. Hein, et nous verrons plus loin euh, comment est-ce que, globalement, on peut repenser la pédagogie pour tous les enfants, pas seulement pour les enfants précoces. Colette euh, J'ai besoin d'exprimer de, quelque chose que je ressens mal. C'est quand vous parlez d'un enfant qui est dans la douance, d'accord, mais que vous parliez d'un enfant tout venant, Je le vis très mal. Oui, peut-être que le terme n'est pas approprié, mais il me semble. J'ai l'impression qu'il y a peut-être une petite connotation péjorative, moi je ne le sens pas bien. Oui, enfin, ce n'est pas tellement l'esprit, justement, on est nous attentifs à tous les enfants. So the, the lady asked, said that she had a problem with um, calling gifted children and defining gifted children and normal children. Um, and she said that uh, at the start of the conference, she wanted to highlight the fact that it is important to treat all children case by case, and that it's extremely difficult to define uh, intelligence, um, that the intellectually precocious children are, are different and are not dealt with in the same way at school. Children who have a, an IQ that is in the middle of the Gaussian curve, that is to say the, in the 50%, 50 percent, they are taken, um, they are handled better at school and they are considered to have a normal development um, and there is, uh, in terms of what we call them, can, could we call them the 50% uh, intelligence, uh, the, uh, the 50, 
Well, it doesn't matter what we call them. The important thing is that all children are different and that we have to take into account this diversity um, in schooling. Voilà, peut-être pour nuancer le, hein, le, Merci. votre remarque qui est justifiée absolument. Hein. Mais vous, comment les appeler euh, enfants euh, 50% dans la norme <rire> Normes au développé Et ça ne veut pas dire que, euh, je dirais, le développement, c'est l'intelligence. Et ça, c'est bien qu'on ait ce débat-là, parce que l'intelligence, c'est extrêmement difficile de définir. Euh, ce n'est pas ce que vont mesurer les tests. Hein, on rentre dans un débat qui... C'est pour ça que j'ai introduit quand même cette, cette conférence en disant l'importance... Euh, finalement, c'est de s'adapter au cas par cas, hein, précoce ou pas précoce. De toute façon, on rencontre une certaine diversité. Mais il est clair que les enfants à 50% normaux développés sont quand même beaucoup plus et mieux gérés par l'école que ceux qui sont sur les extrêmes de la courbe gaussienne. Alors, j'avance encore un tout petit peu. Euh, donc, bon, ce qui me paraît peut-être intéressant, c'est... Euh, Peut-être de, de, pour qu'on ait des cas un petit peu concrets, qu'on puisse rentrer en discussion euh, sur les enfants qui sont euh, en avance. Euh, ils ne sont pas toujours globalement en avance et peut-être pouvons-nous nous arrêter sur deux cas d'accompagnement que nous avons eu euh, au centre qui sont un enfant à haut potentiel euh, que je vais appeler Pascal, que j'ai dépisté à 10 ans et qui en a dit. So I'm going to tell you about two cases in particular, about uh, children uh, that were particularly intellectually precocious. Two cases that we saw at, the, at my centre. First of all, Pascal, who was 10 years old when I first met him, and um, who is 18 today. And Louis, who was very intellectually advanced, um, Pascal has dyslexia and Louis had dyspraxia. Um, um, we, the, both students uh, were profiled and the teachers were given their profiles. And the teachers had a 50% uh, chance of really accommodating for their specificities. Um, hmm? And uh, you, it takes 12 months for the results to, to, to come through. And now they are, they are young adults. Pascal, who has um, dyslexia, it wasn't a very strong form of dyslexia. It was, he was dysauto, what we call dysautographic which slows down his access to written material. He needed written material to be in big letters and for the data to be simplified. So at, at 10 years old, the density of the information he was receiving at school, the information started to become more and more dense and he was finding it more and more difficult to extract the information that he needed. He was making spelling mistakes and he often couldn't complete his homework in the time that was given to him. He had to retake classes And it really depends on how the school treats the information that we give them as to how the, the pupil is, is handled. He was, in, he was intellectually, he was ahead in all of his subjects, however, he had to retake classes. He, he, um, we put pressure so that for him to receive the assistance that he needed. He had no problems in memorizing, as often dyslexia comes with problems in memorizing information. It takes dyslexic students more time to integrate the information. But this was a very simple uh, case of dyslexia. Um, he is now, he, 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 he started to really take off in school from, the, from his A-levels and he is now in a very well-known um, university called INSEA in Lyon. It is an engineering school where he is, his marks are the highest in that he could attain, obtain. Dyslexia is like, is like any other illness that shows symptoms. For example, when you start coughing, it is due to underlying, uh, an underlying illness, whether it be a cold or whether it be lung cancer, and so of varying degrees. And it is very difficult for teachers to recognize 